Hello and good evening. We're streaming live through Google Plus from central London. Um, this is Valentine Warner's Scandinavian Supper, and this is a cook-along. I'll be cooking live and um, in real time. It's all quite nerve-wracking, um, but we'll make it together. We will make it. Um, cooking with me at home are four competition winners, so they'll be on the screen here, and hopefully we'll all cross the finish line together. Um, so I've got some studio guests here with me today, so let me introduce them. There is a Danish food writer here, a wonderful cook, personal friend of mine, Trina Hanneman. Hi, Trina. Hi. Um, Glad to be thank here. Thank you. It's quite nerve-wracking cooking for you because yeah. you're, a, you're a pro. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see about that. Okay. I'm looking forward um, to it. Well, thanks for coming, Trina. Um, our next guest is food adventurer, um, a, an allotment owner, um, and this is the food urchin, yes. Danny. Danny, Danny yes. I ordinarily go by the name of Danny, but you can call me Birch if you like. Can I call you D Danny? Yeah, you call me Danny then, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and finally, um, another accomplished cook, a writer of two books. What is your latest? Uh, do a head dinners, that's it. Uh, James Ramsden also has a wonderful um, supper club, pop up supper club, which I actually haven't been to because I can't get there for love or money. It's so full. Um, so they're going to be helping. Um, so, the point, why are we all here? For the last few months, I've made a series called Valentine Warner Eats Scandinavia. Um, there was a wolf around at one point where, and I thought for a moment it might be called Scandinavia Eats Valentine Warner, but anyway, it didn't become that. Um, and we went to uh, Lapland, up in the cold snow, minus 45, came down into uh, Sweden, um, so we're in, sorry, Swedish Lapland, came down into Sweden and then went into Denmark and had lots of fun in Copenhagen and around and about the islands and then went up into the wild wilderness um, of Norway, had an amazing time, met some really amazing people, ate some utterly delicious food and totally fell in love um, with a place that I'd always hoped to visit. Um, it's called Valentine Warner Eats Scandinavia. It starts on September the 16th, that's why we're all here. Um, to celebrate this, um, it starts at 8 p.m. It runs from Monday to Friday, two weeks, and you can watch me make my way through Scandinavia. And hopefully you'll want to cook some of the things that um, we made along the way. So that's um, what to expect. Um, we have four competition winners um, who are going to be cooking along with me. Each of the winners entered by voting online via the Facebook app on the Good Food website. Um, and there was a competition about which recipe, you know, which recipe was wanted, um, did people want to cook. Um, they've all been sent the ingredients, so they'll work with me as I go. So, uh, Nikki, where's Nikki? Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Are you ready for this? Oh, uh, yes. I'm nervous, but yes. Excellent. I've got a team. We're all going to so make it. You're doing well there. Um, hang in there. Um, we've got Ginny. Where's Ginny? There's Hi. Ginny. Hi, Hi Ginny. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Have you got everything ready to go? Yep, yep. yep, yep. You're not going to be undoing packets or running to the... You're all ready. We Hopefully can not, no. Go. Okay. Um, and Lil Liliana. It's Liliana. Hi. Liliana, sorry. That's okay, no problem. You're there as well. We've got you all. Yeah. And are you ready for this? I think so. I hope so. I'm a little nervous, so stay with me. <laughs> um, and you're in good hands. We've got all of the other contributors here. Um, and Gemma. Gemma's there. Gemma? You're confident in keeping up. <laughs> Gemma's there. She's, yeah, there. She's there. there. She's there. Yeah, She's no there. Worry. Um, She's in her kitchen. Right. Um, so James, Danny, and Trina will be here to work out. If you want to send in some, and sorry. Um, and so by the way, if I look like I'm talking to someone, I'm a bit mad. There is somebody talking in my ear, so excuse me. I haven't really done this before. Um, right, uh, and along with us backstage is the Times journalist Alex Hardy, and she's going to be helping us with any kind of uh, Twitter questions that come in and, uh, That's right. and thing. <laughs> tweeting. She's tweeting backstage. I am. Um, Right, so if you do want to send in a question on Twitter, don't forget to include the hashtag EatScandy. Is that right? Yes, it is. I did it. Okay, um, so we've met our winners. Everyone's ready to cook. Um, and some of you at home, I'm sure there'll be other people who will be joining in this. I'll try and make it really, really nice and clear. Um, so the dish that was voted for tonight, well, there was a choice. Um, it was a mackerel burger, 
uh, which I chose to call the Big Mac. Um, not a quarter of flounder, I might add. Um, um, uh, there was an open sandwich with place and prawns. Now, uh, Trina cooked this for me um, when we were doing the open sandwich program special in Copenhagen. And my goodness me, it was absolutely delicious, but sadly that didn't get voted for. And I think you all know what it's going to be. That's nice, because it's a nice Swedish meatball. Um, so Swedish meatballs is our winner. That's what we're all going to be cooking. Um, if you've got any questions, again, just to repeat, um, hashtag Eat Scandinavia on Twitter. Right. Okay. So now it's time to cook. Well, Swedish meatballs it is. Um, I'm a bit nervous about this one. I cooked this in Stockholm in a youth hostel meatball off. Um, I'd been around uh, Sweden a bit, eating their meatballs, and I found the sauce a little bit school-like. So I decided to go off piste, make my own sauce. And um, although I'm calling the Swedish meatballs, it was purely because I was wearing an apron and standing in Stockholm. But I was told that um, I had no right to call them Swedish meatballs because I broke some golden rules. And I'm going to break them again now because the recipe is good. So, and Trina, I'm sure, is going to tick me off because she's, um, you know, everyone's got a meatball recipe. Yeah, I mean, it is a very Scandinavian thing, and every family have their own recipe. And so there's actually no real truth to this. But we are very excited to see what you are going to come up with. That's in very your, generous of yes. you. <laughs> and you can see that people in the kitchen is starting cooking. So uh, Everyone's going, so one shallot, if you've got small shallots, use six of these. I've got one nice big shallot. Now, I know, Trina, you don't, um, you don't cook your onions, do you, or your shallots? No, no, I put them in raw, very finely chopped or grated, so they become really mushy. And I've never seen this before, so that's quite exciting, actually. Exciting, great. I'm glad I'm exciting you already, and I'm yeah. only chopping onions. Guys, what do you think, un, you know, cooked or uncooked? I'm, I'm slightly torn because I feel I should bow to the great knowledge of Trina, but also um, if you don't chop them fine enough and don't cook the meatballs enough and you do get a big crunch of raw onion in there, it's quite uh, a shock. And I would say you'd have to cook them for quite a while because I don't like a, a crunchy onion either. So, so guys, um, yeah, I think the onion shallots are the unsung heroes of the kitchen, so don't rush the onion and shallot cooking. Give them time to get nice and soft and tender. But the taste of the onions is a very important part of the meatball. I will give you that. Yes, Trina. <laughs> so, it, and um, the whole love that goes into the mixture you're doing right now is also very important. Thank you. And the they're love. all chopping the love, you know. Love is cooking and love goes together. But you know, I'm just also keeping an eye on the your friends over there How cooking the meatballs. Doing? They're doing really well. They're cooking. The they're looking at us, the lady in the white. Maybe so onions, want, ladies. Anybody wants to answer a question, let us know. Are you all right there? Okay. Onions and, and a nice, healthy, yeah. luxurious amount of butter. Don't yeah, be shy yeah. with the butter. No, no, no. It's Winter's all about coming butter. after all. Now, I'm not yeah, actually cooking the potatoes, potatoes today. Yeah. I've got a little helper downstairs, and she's doing me some lovely potatoes, which I'm just simply going to rice onto the plate so they mop up all the sauce. My shallots are on the go. Now... Um, what goes in the meatballs? Hold on, let me just have a little clean up. You're all watching me. There's lots of people watching this. And you just, you know, got to be nice yeah. and clean. Okay, turn this down. Are you generally quite a clean cook? Yeah. So, <laughs> what was I saying about the potatoes? Starting yeah. the meatballs, the potatoes yeah. should be going in yeah. now too. And you salt in the water, not salt in the water. Salt in the water or not salt in the water? It's really up to you, and I'm not oh, going to have a fight about this. This is, is about meatballs, not whether to put the salt in the water. That is a family decision. Great, great. That is son that's of a good. diplomat. Yes. Um, so I've got half veal, we'll and I've got half kitchen. pork. If you don't agree with veal, by all manner, you can get lovely British rosé veal. But if you don't agree with veal, then just use beef. And then if you've got beef in the fridge and all the other things, don't go to the supermarket to buy the pork. You can kind of use what you want, but ideally, I like to use half veal, half pork. So that's in there. One egg. My onions, don't forget the onions just because you're doing something else, which I already have, and they're getting a bit brown, which is very, very There's bad. There's a very nice smell in here. It's lovely. Lovely already smell. It's browning onions through. is so... All spice. Yeah. Is that allowed to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So two teaspoons of all spice. Uh, white pepper, like the stuff you find in a cafe and put yeah. on your um, oh, fried egg. Got a lot of that. Good whack of that. Don't be shy. You've got to taste it off. Why white pepper instead of black? It's just got that lovely thing that white pepper does at black, doesn't I don't know. You know, that's got that kind of lovely dustiness, if I, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, a good scratch of nutmeg, which isn't normally in Swedish meatballs, but I like it. So I'm putting in, and don't forget, there's a million mothers in a million different houses who all say that their recipe is the true one. Um, this is my recipe. Um, 
So, what else have we got to go in here? Some salt. Um, it does need a generous amount of seasoning. You can always put more in at the end. Um, if you don't know how much salt to use, um, take a little bit of the mix once it's mixed, fry it, see how it tastes, and then if you need to put it more, put it into the rest of the mix. Um, so do a little taster, basically. Some breadcrumbs, which keeps the meatballs really, really lovely and soft, and a splash of milk. Yeah, I would use sparkling water, but that's... You would use sparkling water? How extravagant. Yes. That's actually oh. something my grandmother taught me, so we've done it in my family for many, many years, so... Okay. Well, I'm not going to Why argue with a long line of Hanemans. I, I add it in the end, and it gives a really lovely lightness to the meatballs. Right. So I mix everything. Now, get your hands in here. You can mix it with a spoon, but it never does quite as good a job as getting your no, hands in. Would hands you agree to that? No, and I hope there's a lot of tweeting coming in. What about Alex over there? Is um, I'm admiring the um, you and my, yeah, the you're tweeting a lot. Delicious. Any is there anything? Well, any I've got questions? we've got someone who's watching, but uh, they're in the Netherlands and they're 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 really sad that they're not going to be able to see your show. Oh, I'm very <laughs> sad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everyone could stream everything from wherever they we were in the world. So. so the last thing I've got to go in here is my onions. They're not quite so ready yet. Something. And then James, would you care to, when the time comes, to come round and um and get rolling? Uh, be my pleasure. Don't forget okay. to wash your hands, James. I've already washed them down. Yeah, Good. yeah, yeah. But so have we got any more um, questions coming in? No. But I just want to say to James, don't turn it into the Swedish Muppet Show. You know, the Swedish chef <laughs> and the Muppet Show would be... be um, I, don't know, I don't know how you could ever doubt me, Trina. <laughs> no, I would never doubt you. How the, um, how are, there's a lot of cooking there, going yeah. on. I can't see the pans you're using, ladies, but the cooking no. looks very competent. Yeah. Everyone's concentrating. No, the, at the, the mixture is going well, I can see. And there's over there... Gemma is, yeah, mixture. Hands, that's get it, your hands yeah. in there. Get your hands yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, don't be afraid. This is the most important tool you have when you're cooking. Onions in. Just put a bit of meat on top so you don't burn your hands on the hot onions, but that's not. Once it's mixed in, it's absolutely fine. Again, really mix properly. It's kind of, mixing properly is important. You don't want all the in all spice in one mouthful and all the onion in another, you've just got to make sure that every single mouthful is the glorious sum parts of everything that's meant to be in here. Okay. What's a good amount of meatballs per serving, if you, you know? Ooh, well, <laughs> so, see, are you talking Norwegian meatballs or Swedish meatballs? Well, okay, because what's the difference between the two? They're much bigger. Right, yeah. okay. And it also depends on the piece of person you would ask or serve right. it for. Yeah. I mean, my, my children James. has had it once a week, and I think my son, he would eat between 12 right. and 14 yeah, for dinner, but right. that's way too much, you okay. know. All right, let's see. Yeah, mixture going in there. I can see all hands. All hands are working, and now there is also forming. So nice little, nice little balls, balls, ladies. Balls that size. doesn't sound a bit weird. Um, that sort of size? <laughs> Maybe it's too big. It's all about me. It is his recipe. Golf ball. A little less than golf ball. Little. I don't play golf, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no, look at that perfect little one there. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. Is, is yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah, lots of love in that one. Thank I can see that. that. So, but I think you have to be a little quicker, actually. By the way, um, in Copenhagen, um, I rang Trina and. Typical of Trina, she had two very famous Brazilian chefs staying at her house. So although we were making Scandinavian food series, I went to her house and ate some really, really incredible food cooked by some wonderful Brazilian ladies who really knew their stuff. Yeah. We drank hyperemias under the Copenhagen sun. With Danish strawberries in them. With Danish strawberries, which um, I have to say, I think I have found the best strawberries in the world. Danish strawberries and Swedish strawberries, the land of the midnight sun. Yeah. Norwegian strawberries, they just are sweet like no strawberries I've ever eaten. Look, life. look at your friends over there. They are doing the same as you. Every Hooray. Yeah, How, can we rolling. have a look at those meatballs, yeah. please? How big are they? Very nice hand Come on, don't hide them around, under the screen. I can see. Yeah. A little big, just pinch a tiny bit off. That's more Norwegian. <laughs> I'd go half. That will make about three. Lift it up a little bit. Can we see? Little Lift bit. those meatballs. Yes, yeah. Is Boy. there anybody have any questions or anything you'd like to say to us? We'd love to hear from you. They're very concentrated. <laughs> so <laughs> like here in the studio. Can you see what's going on, Danny? Sorry if I'm yes, in your way. Okay, good. Have wars what do you actually think been about fought the size? Over, meatballs. over meatballs, by their content, their size, their accompaniment? Yeah, there's a lot. There's always there's local and regional meatballs. 
you know, res you know, competitions. There is recipe books only with meatballs. You also have to think there's a lot of meatballs with only fish. So that's you know, then and, and then fish balls. Fish balls, yeah. What was very confusing is when I went to this youth hostel meatball cook-off. Um, I was told that I was making, uh, basically the other guy who was making the meatballs, who is a Swedish meatball aficionado, turned out to be from Letterkenny <laughs> in Ireland. <laughs> um, so I was yeah. really confused by yeah, the time yeah. I left. Um, and they don't have the same name. You know, they, you call them meatballs, but in Swedish it's schuttballe, and in Denmark that it's, it's uh, frikadella. 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 Now what's this, this combination of meat called? It's, it's in Danish? Yeah. Uh, Svinekød og kalvekød. And what's the fast thing you were saying? Fast, fast yeah. Fast. We, this mixture you have right here, we have a name for it. Well, this one. We call it fast. Valentine? Yes. Okay. Is those meatballs all right for size? Where are they? Let's see your... Yeah, now I would say that's a beautiful Norwegian meatball. Here, yeah. have a look at mine. Okay. Okay. So too snap, it, snap, snap it in two. Okay. That's a bit too big. Okay. I don't know if you've ever eaten an Ikea meatball, but kind of more that size. Okay, thank you. The one, the one in the corner, down, look at that. Val, can you yep. take a look at that? Now, are you making beef burgers? <laughs> Nikki, are you making beef burgers? Nikki, are you making beef burgers? I think you do, there's no hurry. Have you been to Denmark? They look a bit Danish, I think. The, um, just a little bit, or at least make them, listen, you don't have to do them again, they're lovely, but just make them a bit rounder. Oh, okay. <laughs> firm them up a bit, yeah. And okay. kind of, yeah, squeeze them together a bit more, firm them up. Okay. As a result of this, um, <laughs> we're going to have to do a takeaway service. There are people already uh, putting in orders for meatballs. Oh, Sabrina, yeah. orders for Sabrina meatballs already has. Um, well, that's good to know. Now, um, uh, great, this cooker induction, by the way, is very complicated. So, could you, um, so we would like to know if people like to have dill or expert, not dill yeah. in the sauce. Okay. Um, because I need. This oven to go on. So go. what are you going to fry them in? Induction slightly freaks me out. I'm not used to it. We're all going to have to get used to it one day, but I'm still learning, so uh, bear with me. Wouldn't it be awful if you were doing a cook-along and the oven didn't work? <laughs> right. Um, okay, so I'm melting some butter in here, and I'm going to, once it's foaming, don't rush them. If they don't sizzle the minute they hit the pan, then the pan's not ready. We all tend to kind of race and put meat in the pan. It slowly heats up goes a bit grey and watery. Just kind of wait, and then the meatballs will start browning straight away. Are you looking forward to these meatballs? I can't wait. And are um, you, are you checking on the potatoes, please? And I, I have a question, Well, Do you use unsalted or salted butter? Sorry? Did, are you using unsalted or salted? This lady is giving me a run for my money tonight, but I'm using unsalted no, butter. No, it's, it's done with love. Lots done of love. love. <laughs> Using unsalted skin. Unsalted okay, butter. and what did you learn in Scandinavia? Something that I've forgotten. <laughs> you use a lot of salted butter, and that can be a big surprise in a recipe. So, you know, when you check out recipes from Scandinavia, make sure, you know, because. I do it remember makes a Trina, difference. actually, I didn't do my homework because so I remember Trina talking to me about this in the comfort of her own home. James Ramson, you're an amazing meat yeah. roller. Well done. Um, Great ball so in pleasure. Pleasure. Her Thank own you, home, there was Trina telling me about salted butter. Look, Gemma is putting on, yeah, that's going Fantastic. meatballs on Tweeting. pans and all in the homes. Um, cooking on too high heat. Remember that once the gas is on, just because it's on doesn't mean that you should cook at that heat all the time. Gas has a knob on it, so you can regulate it. So just don't burn the butter, because if you've gone to all the trouble, um, to fry your meatballs, and then you've got black smoking butter, you're going to ruin the whole thing. So use the knob if it's there. Is, is, uh, is, one senses that in, in the UK at the moment, oil is the standard cooking thing as a fat as opposed to butter. Is it still very much butter in Scandinavia? Uh, there's a lot of butter, uh, and that's why I felt so at home there. <laughs> um, there's a lot of butter, butter yeah. love going on. Yeah. Also, don't be shy of the butter. Uh, it's good for you. Um, well, you need it through those long winters. Uh, you need it through oh the long yeah. winters, and you need it through the summer as well, frankly. <laughs> and you need the butter in the sauce. It gives really nice taste. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, butter is a big thing in Scandinavia. Uh, now, I'm burning my meatballs, I'm afraid, to everybody. So I'm going to just have a bit of damage limitation over here. See, that's the reason why you love fire. You can control that better. Um, there was a lot of fire in Scandinavia. We cooked over a lot of, um, you know, little fires, basically, yeah. with cast iron pans. Don't burn your meatballs. I was talking about not burning stuff, and I've gone and burnt my meatballs, which is a disgrace. 
It's funny, yeah. Home cooking, hey? They're not burnt, but they're caramelized. But how dare I, yeah. Valentine Warner, be giving you a lesson in cooking meatballs, and there I am, burning my meatballs. I mean, why am I here? <laughs> it's never burnt. Are you caramel. burning your meatballs at home? Take it easy on those meatballs. Yeah, control Feel the, the love. heat. Yeah. Feel the love. Treat okay, them Nikki love. is running. Someone's so running around <laughs> the place Nikki's here. running around. She's, uh, oh, she's just washing her hands, I think, but she's not burning meatballs. Are you? No. No, no, no. Someone's still rolling. No, but I think it's, uh, it just shows, Val, that cooking is now in here, and you have to, you know, you, you have to know your stove. That's and you have very, to know your, your stove. Fire. Know your stove and know your, yeah. And if you're cooking, don't be distracted. Cook no. with love and stay with <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Don't. But let's see what's going on. And any Twitter news? I think when, well, also, yeah. just, just like to say ask quickly, the that deal Scandinavians question. eat as a family. There's a lot yeah. of family eating there. It's important part of the day. And people really okay, take the Sabrina there. says go for the deal. Go <laughs> for it. We asked yes. them about the deal in the sauce, and people are... Um, is there some very upset and um, sweet? Yeah, no, time? no, I don't know. We don't know. Yeah. We're, yeah. Deal, go for the deal. People <laughs> like the... The, the judge in her own right, who judges meatballs, said her grandmother would turn in her grave. Yeah. What can I say to that? I went very silent. Um, okay, is there any questions from the from the people at home? Our friends in their own kitchens? No. Still got some no. They're all fine. Thumbs up. Thumbs, okay, up. thumbs, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah. Are we looking for yeah, thumbs up thumbs at home? Up, please. Yeah. Great. Are you all me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. Nikki, thumbs up. Oh yeah. Double Great. thumbs up. <laughs> okay, she's so fine. Me, me, she's, she's laughing. She's she's fine. Meat is very important uh, as part of the diet. Then. Yeah. I mean, we, we, um, especially pork, which yeah. is like the, the staple meat that we eat. And as Val says, in Scandinavia, home-cooked meal every night with your family is the standard. Yeah. And so therefore, all these traditional dishes are actually a, a really big part of the everyday meal. That isn't to say that Scandinavians don't eat you know, food mm. from around the world as well. But we do tend to eat these uh, every, which is, meatballs is a typical everyday meal. But to yeah. So You've got to get a bit of brown on them because it's the brown that takes some yeah. real flavour into the sauce. I'm actually did, I slightly under seasoned them, but being nervous, I started cooking them straight away. So I'm just going to add a little bit more salt in here, like that. So talking of, of butter and fat, um, what I love about restaurants in Copenhagen is that when you get your beautiful bread at the beginning of the meal, as well as your butter, you get a little pot of pig fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's usually flavoured with rosemary or juniper yeah. or something. Yeah, it's yeah. just the bread in the bread in all three countries was absolutely sensational. No, but maybe, but, I mean Denmark was particularly yeah. outstanding. The sourdough and the coffee, there's a country of people who actually know how to make coffee. For all the coffee shops we have in the UK, only a very few of them actually know how to turn out a decent coffee. But everywhere you go in Denmark coffee was outstanding. But and it it's is. given away free in, in um, garages as yeah. well in Norway. Yeah. Help yourself to the filter coffee. If you want anything more fancy, you pay for it. So I'm but just I, taking these out. Sorry. I grew up with coffee morning, noon and night. I mean, we'd have a cup of coffee before we went to bed. That was my grandmother. And talking about fat, my, if I was, hung, you know, if I was, as a little kid, was, was saying I was a bit hungry, my, my grandfather would take a piece of rye bread and put some, some fat and salt on top of it. That was my snack. So, yeah. You've grown up, and that's why you've grown up. So, lovely. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I'll make... Any it's Twitter stuff? Yeah, I've uh, got something from Alex Lawson. Uh, this is probably a question maybe for Trina. Um, Scandy Christmas gifts. What can they do, maybe food-wise? Oh, there's so much. You can do the, the, the glue wine. If the, you, you boil down the extract and put on bottle, bottles to give away. Um, there's a lot of different... Uh, we call it relish, but it's similar to your chutney, but you have relish as well, um, with apples and plums and things you do leading up to Christmas. Then there's a, a range of, of cookies. There's like 30 different ones. Wow. And um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunities. Also, uh, uh, nuts done in different ways. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry to interrupt you. No, I'm just yeah, putting some flour to. into the pan, about two tablespoons, and it's very important to kind of cook out that dry taste. Now, quite a lot of the... Uh, talk about Christmas in August. Yeah, that's wrong, by the way. That's not yeah, allowed. We, you can't talk about Christmas Scandinavians in Scandinavians are right. obsessed with Christmas. You have to come back in December, as you promised. I will. Good. Try and because keep me away. Is, yeah. um, now, uh, most of the time, to thicken the sauce um, for Swedish meatballs, corn flour is used, not flour. I'm not mad about corn flour, um, and I just I don't like the consistency, really, so I prefer to use... Um, 
normal plane flight. What do you think of that? I think this is the way it should be done. There are other ways. I think it's a bit, a little bit like cheating. My grandmother told me doing it like that. The other ways is, yeah, it's easier. It's because people don't want to do this, the, the beginning part of it, where it becomes a little bit lumpy, and there's some work to be done to make sure there's no lumps in there. And you, they're frying meatballs in the kitchens now. I'm adding beef stock, ladies. They're not quite there yet. Okay. Now you're, you're actually ahead here. I'm ahead. Yeah. I'm ahead now. What a surprise. Okay, I'll yeah. slow. I've not quite fried my balls yet. Mine are raw still. Carry on scanning. All right. Um, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, but that's also nice, you know. It's Friday night, a glass of wine yeah, while you're yeah, cooking, yeah. you know. Yeah, you should have a glass of wine. Why don't you have a glass of wine? Yeah, be an aqua with. We had a full night of, um, I did a uh, long drinking party in the Weather <laughs> Island in uh, Sweden. And there was a lot of aqua with it. A lot of um, naked jumping into a farm full of jellyfish. Oh, yeah. And yeah. um, we forgot about the jellyfish. Okay, keep on um, uh -huh. Sorry. Okay. When you had the langoustine in, in Sweden, did they boil them in beer? Uh, I think nobody. Okay, because that's a, a big question in Sweden. I really like it to boil it with, with, with dill. This is something where we use the dill. Dill and beer and you black pepper. And poach the langoustines in that? Yeah. So I want to just bring up this. Induction is really stressing me out. Yeah. Here. Well, not stressing me out. Don't worry, I'm having a really lovely time, but... Um, there's a lot of fiddling going on. Induction is one of those weird things that once you get the hang of it, it's brilliant, but until you do, it's not so brilliant. Okay, so this is beef stock, in case you're wondering. Um, that's about enough. Um, chicken stock's fine. Um, beef stock is, stock is preferable. Okay. Should we see if there's any Twitter coming in? We're, we're, there's lots of talk about butter love at the moment. Okay. About butter love. <laughs> yeah. Your life's friends too, out there. Life's too short for um, too little. Yeah, butter. Get as much butter into your life as possible. Do you know what Julia Child said? No. If you don't want to use butter, use cream. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, says it all. Listen to that. Okay. So a little bit of white wine. Not necessary if you don't have it. I just like to put a little bit in. So about 50 mils of white wine. And just kind of let that bubble away a little bit. And weirdly, I know Trina's with me on this, there's a lot of vinegar used in Scandinavian cooking. I think vinegars really make sauces and stews. It gives an edge to something. You don't want it to be sour or make your face pucker, but a little edge from vinegar um, is a good thing. So I'm going to put in a good splash of vinegar. Taste as you go. We tend to cook so much, but we never taste anything. How do you know what you're cooking is good if you don't taste it? I think that's a very important part of home cooking and also enjoying it as you go along. You know, yeah. you taste your food here and there and, and that's also how you learn to cook. Yeah. And also, disasters are as important as successes. Yeah. yeah. And I've that's had a few of those. Um, a little bit of, actually, I'm going to put that in later. Right. Um, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish mustard all taste very similar, but it's quite hard to find in this country. But there is French's hot dog mustard. It's actually pretty similar. So I'm going to put in a big teaspoon of that. It's not a mustard sauce, so go sparingly. You can put it in, but you can't take it out. So there is sauce happening. There's a sauce action going on. Yeah, the sauce action down here at, I think it's Gemma. And yeah, I don't know where Nikki is at. Do you have questions or comments about mm. the Scandinavian? Does it smell good in your kitchen? Does your kitchen smell good? Now, there's an important question. Does your kitchen smell it good right now? My kitchen yeah. smells amazing. Okay, it smells amazing. My sauce looks a little bit sort of lumpy. <laughs> well, get the whisk going. Use a whisk okay, instead of a spoon, lumpy. and it helps eradicate lumps. Okay, thanks. Who are you cooking for? Yeah. Is that your... Who are you cooking for there? <laughs> My sauce. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's lots of people in Niggy's house. Oh, look, there's loads of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hi. Where have you all been hiding in the kitchen cabinets? Yes. <laughs> like little trolls. Like little trolls. <laughs> That's something I did not see. I looked really you hard. You promised me that you were going to find a troll for me. I, 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 went um, I heard a troll. You did? I went into the woods with my torch and I got near a troll, oh. but I didn't um, see the troll. Okay. So, got another question. Yeah. 
Um, uh, from Alex Hardy, just wondering where the wine is, not for the meal, but for the floydiness. Um, <laughs> I'm having a, a dry moment in my life, actually. And I'd normally have a glass of wine, especially at home, but I'm not drinking at the moment. But, just... but I would... I would say. Alex, how's it going? She's yeah, backstage fine. tweeting. She's so backstage she's tweeting away. So that's the reason why. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and I just wanted talking. to say about that <laughs> if we should keep it strictly Scandinavian, it should be beer. Yeah. Or yeah. But they are starting to, to produce wine, uh, but uh, it's, you know. So I've just got some beer. creme fraiche in. Yeah, it's a beer country. Countries. Dark sorry. Elves. Oh. That ails lots of different things. I mean, Carlsberg were taking over the world, but yeah. now there is like a hundred and hundreds and hundreds of uh, small microbreweries, so it's a very interesting place to visit for beer. We went to see a company called Sodra, yeah. um, who make absolutely incredible yeah. beer. Now, there is the sauce. Now, the important thing is to really make the sauce come alive. The meatballs have got to go back in. They're not also totally cooked yet. And I've got to turn down the heat because it's going bonkers. So um, any, yeah, look, we just have to follow our friends. Yeah, how, how are they getting on? I see the sauce more than one place now. How are you getting on? So, Ginny? I just had a face full of vinegar, but my sauce is coming. Are you all right? Um, <laughs> yeah. When you've taken the meatballs off the plate, don't throw that in the sink. That's very important that it goes into yeah. your sauce. Oh, Nikki is going back. I'm just putting the creme fraiche back in the sauce. Great. <laughs> I hope it's full fat creme fraiche as well, not that half fat nonsense. And have you have you have you did little tasting going, you know, as Val is saying, you know, taste it now and then so you know where you are and if you you know how you want to kind of tweak it, you know. Tweak it. Tweak Tweaking's it. a good word. Now a little bit of um, now my salt and my sugar, I've got them confused. Um, hold on. I'm not sure, Liliana, how are you doing? Are you fr I'm okay, I think. Okay, because your, your, your camera is a bit far for us and we can't really see your action. I've just put in a little tiny bit more sugar into my sauce, um, just a small amount um, to give it a little sweetness that I want. Um, and now I'm going to add a little bit, of, a little bit more salt. Yes. And that's just going to bubble away. Have I got a? Is there a lid for this, by the way? Does anyone know if there's? Uh, I haven't seen one. I might. You might it. use a plate. plate. Is it big enough oh. for you? Yeah. So, any questions there? Looking into the camera. Are there any furious Swedes who are saying you absolutely mm -hmm. should not be putting um, dill in? How dare you? You can never come back to our country again. We can't believe we let you come in the first place. I haven't. Okay. No, There's someone I'm not asking aware of for your it. take on IKEA meatballs. <laughs> asking if yours are better. Sorry. Someone's asking if your meatballs are better than um, I a well-known Swedish furniture store. I prefer mine. Yes, most definitely. I, they are, I think you should make your own. They're, as Val has shown, they are quite easy they're to very make. Very easy. Yeah, it's very, not very a easy. it's not a difficult meal to. Um, I mean, but it's a lovely meal. And I, have you ever met a child who doesn't like meatballs? I was just trying to rack my brains. No. No. no my but in, in, in Denmark, yeah. they say that all children are made of liver pate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On rye bread. On rye bread. Liver yeah. pate, um, we, made quite, we made some liver pate in the program and it was delicious. You get a bit addicted to it. It's quite good when you leave, um, when you leave Copenhagen because then you can leave the liver pate behind. Yeah. It gets no, it's, um... Um, I'm just chopping up a bit of dill. Now, this is um, the look on the judge's face when I cooked this. I was chopping the dill and she went ashen and steadied herself against the table and shook her head. And I thought, yeah, it, she was very, very upset by what I'm about to do. But it is interesting that Scandinavian countries are so affiliated with dill because one of the main things we use it for is actually grab the lax. And, yes, yeah, and fish. And, you know, and, fish. And, and, and then it is actually used in a lot of different things more in Russia, you could say. But so why do oh, you use it? Look at now, how, look at that. Oh. Go, I'd go calm your sauce down just a little bit. Cut. It's looking very nice. Just turn your sauce down a little bit. Don't race it. And then your dill can go in. Just keep a little bit back for colour, and the stuff that you put in first will discolour. Can you see mine? Because it's going to stain. Can we see? Let's have a look. Step back and tilt your dish more. I can only see your lovely pan. Tilt it. 
Tilt it without pouring sauce on the floor. Um, yeah, carefully. I'm yeah. trying to put the camera down. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Looking nice. Then Dil I mean, can. Yeah. Dil can go in. And one of the really important reasons not to, you know, like let the sauce boiling away is because it can become bitter. And um, you want this like smooth and nice, I think. Your potatoes are probably going to be nearly done. Mine have magically appeared. But if your potatoes are done, you can just turn it off and leave it in the leave it in the That's water and idea. you know until you're ready to finish them, right, Val? No, I'm just going to clear up a little bit because it's getting messy behind my. Thankfully, you can't see it. And let's see. Yeah, now Jenny is ready to put the meatballs back into the sauce. It looks like. Are you ready to put yeah. the meatballs in the sauce? Uh, there's some question here. No, my, my meatball, my sauce is just bubbling still. That okay. sounds great. Okay. So if your meatballs were nice and brown in the beginning, you only really need to bubble them away gently for about 10 minutes. Okay. Have you, they, tasted, have you tasted the sauce? No, nope, I will do that now. Okay, good. How many are you cooking for? Three. How many are you cooking for? Three people. Three okay. people. The, where, are, where have you hidden them away? They're, they're carefully sneaking around the kitchen. I'll bring them through. Well, I've got two of them here. Two. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Right, well, I so, say that these are nearly I'm going to have another one. Delicious. Do you like the sauce? Mm. Are we going to have uh, some lingonberry? I wouldn't have <laughs> without the lingonberry sauce. If at home, lingonberry sauce is very hard. Um, sorry, that was wrong. Lingonberry sauce is very easy to find. Um, online, there's some kind of shops about the country where you can certainly buy it, but certainly online you'll get lingam resource and lots of choices too. But if you can't get it, um, first port of call, the equivalent would be probably red currant jelly. If you can't get red currant jelly, things, things are getting a bit tough. Um, cranberry sauce, and then if you can't get either of them, I even go as far as to say raspberry jam. But try and get the lingam re, red currant. Cranberry sauce, raspberry jam, last option. The it's raspberry really nice jam is really weird, though. I have to try that now because I, I only eat that with the, with the little yeah. Abelisque or the donuts for Christmas, you know. But yeah. I'll be open. I'll be open. Be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. I will. I promise. We've got another question from the Twitter sphere from James uh, Clampin, who's saying, uh, Mine always fall apart when cooking. How do I keep them together? I think he means me. Really use your hand. Cook your hand. So. If you don't, I, one problem I find with putting raw onions in is because they're quite hard, they tend to stop the mince really going together. Um, you don't, um, and just really work your hands, work them. Kind of, I like my meatballs not, you know, quite kind of dense and as they should be. Um, bread crumbs will help in there with a little bit of milk. Try and make it all kind of soft, but just spend time on them. If you just kind of do that and put them down, then just really love each one and yeah, compress it, them. It's about the fat. And the and the breadcrumbs, you know, getting that mixed well in together, that's going to hold the meat together. Fatty meat as well, yeah. not too lean meat. And cook them gently too, hey Trina. Yeah, yeah, cook, yeah, that's very important. Yeah, I mean, you can't make meatballs with uh, too lean, you know, like the like like the meat you use for tatar, you know, any too lean minced meat that won't make um, uh, quality. Good, tasty meatballs. For any vegetarians fat. out there, um, we were asked, um, <coughs> how do you make a vegetarian meatball? Trina replied that you would use um, beets, um, beetroots of some sort. We could even do them with kind of beans, but um, I'm deferring to uh, Danish. Raw meatballs. shredded beets. To make the balls. Yeah, the beets. <laughs> right, what's going on there? So, um, it's looking a little bit watery. Right. Um, that's probably too much stock. Um, too much stock and not enough flour. Okay. Um, too much stock to flour. So. Um, we'll set again. No. What I'm going to probably do is um, get another pan. Um, get another pan on 
and yeah. fill off two thirds of the sauce and just reduce it quite quickly. And the other meatballs are probably nearly cooked now. Okay. We'll serve them in a bowl and go for more of a soupy affair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, no, it's uh, it, it's you can see that there's a lot of um, a positive action in the kitchen around. There's a lot of around you. Action. Yeah. Well, we're nearly there with our meatballs. There's nothing better than to cook with other people. I mean, talking in the kitchen. The kitchen is the room where everybody wants to yeah. go, not the yeah. sitting room. The kitchen. Um, and what about the potatoes? I've got my potatoes here. Are you watching here. the potatoes at home as well? I've got my hot potatoes here. I'm going to load up my ricer. Lovely floury potatoes is what you want. You don't want waxy ones. And you don't need... What I love about this, I was um, in right up in Karuna in Swedish Lapland, and um, I made a stew um, with smoked reindeer heart and mushrooms and cream. And the potatoes were just simply riced onto the edge of the plate. You didn't need the butter and everything. Potatoes were riced on top of the sauce, and it just mopped up all the sauce and lingered inside. side. So I'm not going to mash them at all. Just straight for a ricer onto the edge of the plate, nothing else. Maybe a little bit of salt on top because I cooked them in It's a shame that, that nobody saw James and Dennis' faces while you were describing that dish. That all, all their, you know, like... I mm. drifted <laughs> off for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, I made mm. that dish again yeah. in this program, so you will be able to see the smoked reindeer heart yeah. um, stew. Offaly is quite big. Sorry? Offaly is quite big as well. Off, yeah, everything, you can't waste food up there. Yeah. Well, you, you can, but people don't. Do. Oh. And also being very Sami tribal, it's a long tradition of respecting food and nothing gets wasted. I ate reindeer heart, I ate reindeer tongue, um, broth, fat. Right, okay, so I'm going to put it all together. Are you ready in, at home? Are you getting there? <coughs> yeah? I got a, one knot. Thumbs up. Yep, ready. Ready, okay, yeah. we're all going to hey. serve. Hooray. Yeah, in there, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I'm up Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, cook-alongers. It's been... I hope you found it easy. Are you guests hungry? Did you get some cold beer for the party? <laughs> Thumbs up, yeah. And another quick question, is, this has come out of Twitter. A lot of people are asking what's the best way to call meatballs. I suppose people might want to make up a big batch and the call best them down way to quickly cool them. Uh, for the freeze or something like that. So what would Well, the, the quickest best way, way to call anything is to put it in quite a wide surface area rather than in a deep bowl because obviously it will get um, colder, um, slower. So just put it in, and we don't have glass chillers, most of us, so I put it in something big and flat and put it on the table outside. Yeah. Just a quick question. Yeah. When do we put the dill in? Uh, the dill goes in just to, so about two thirds of the dill goes into the sauce um, and to cook for about ten minutes, and then just for colour, I put another little bit on right at the end. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so. So we are gonna leave you soon, and we hope you're gonna have a splendid Scandinavian evening. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Lots Can of you sauce. wave to us? New friends? <laughs> They're waving now. Bye bye. Bye. Soon, not yet, but soon. They are like, oh, there's the Swedish, no, Scandinavian <laughs> friends, I think. So you're having a uh, rice issues here. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say to the people, I hope that this national dish is going to be part of your future everyday cooking. Oh, look there, Val. It's coming up one dish there and a glass of champagne. I think I've broken the rice up. Okay. okay. Right. Let's turn the best angle around. There is the meatballs with riced potatoes, lingonberry sauce. It's looking pretty good. Guys, is that at all tempting to you? Very much so. Extraordinarily it good. Is, right, um, we're going to set the table and get everyone over for a little bit of tasting. So in the meantime, we've got a little snippet for you from Valentine Warner Eats Scandinavia. We're going to show that now while we get ready. This is going to be your tool valve. I was thinking for your marinade. What this do you think? is absolutely perfect. Yes, there you go. And there I was looking for a silly, piddly little pastry brush. It's right in the nature. Here, you hold that. Yes, That's for you. Yes. This is for me. 
and let's, can you take that spoon? Absolutely, look at that. Look at that, that's the way we want to do it. A pine frond pastry brush. Great chef minds think alike, because since my visit to Niklas Ekstedt and tasting his smoky creations, I've been planning to finish my tandoori lamb in a very special way. So I've gone and grabbed two big branches of pine. I've plunged them into the sea. I'm just going to lift up the lamb, put this on here, and it's just going to help protect it a bit. It's just going to slow the cooking down a little bit and have a lovely piney, smoky scent. Right, everybody, it's time to try the meatballs. Mm, oh, yeah. In a particularly worn way, I've put lots and lots of sauce on, so the carrying is a pound slush of the good. So that clip was a wonderful, that's the most important part of the year, really, isn't it? It was the, the solstice. Um, the sun was high at 12 o'clock at night. It was a Danish Sanghans. Sanghans. Yeah. We were on the most beautiful fjord. Trina organised the party full of lots of wonderful cooks who came. It was, again, it was quite daunting. I was cooking for a lot of Danish cooks. I roasted the whole lamb on the beach with, with, um, with Scandinavian curry powder, slightly different from our own, and then smoked it with pine branches. And we had a great, great party. Quite a lot of beer was drunk, and uh, we watched the sun, and then had a huge fire and wished out the bad spirits for the end of the year so the crops might be wonderful. And some beautiful singing. And some beautiful singing and a beautiful time. Lots of good Thank food you. and beer. Mm. Yeah. Nothing worse than cold food. No, let's get nope. stuck in. Food in cold places. Sorry, no, forget that. Yeah. Mm. It looks really good. Well, uh, uh, don't look at it. <laughs> bit, <laughs> bit alternative. Bit alternative. So, what's what's what might be seen as controversial about this to to old traditionalists? Not that you're, you know, but to your grandmother say, would she? Uh, the sauce. Mm. But she would never, she'd, because the Danish is different, we call it fregadella and it's without the sauce. But it, the dill is a big thing and there's a lot of flavor in the sauce and normally wouldn't go in there. Do you like but the sauce? But I like it. Mm. I, think it's, I think it's very good. I think you renewed it. Thank goodness and, uh, for that. And I I'm, like, sorry, I like the way you've just simply riced the potato and not really mashed it up as such. Keeps it quite light still, doesn't it? It does. It does. That but is. it also means you can really, you know, do this. Oh yeah, mop, mop everything up. <laughs> and this is also, I mean... Going back to children, this is a way children really love to eat. Mm. And that's, excuse me, that's why this is a dish that's served in homes, private in Scandinavia, if you yeah. It is on the menu every week. It's very cozy as yeah, well. Yeah, it? it's a win. It is. We eat it in summer as well. We eat it all year <laughs> no, round. But you were going to say it's a winter <laughs> dish, yeah, but no, it's, it's not. eaten all the no. time. No, no, I think, I think you've done well for the sauce as well. And I, but for me, having that sweet and sour lingon yeah. and that sweet and sour thing you know with a lot of different things and the vinegar and the sauce that is what finishes up for me the Scandinavian flavors so playing around mm. like that is a good idea you don't you know you have to be new tradition mm. right yeah so it's allowed <laughs> yeah Thank i you. will i will support you in this Thank you very much. when the sweets come after you coming from this lady <laughs> here i'm gonna run with that one has anything else been said on Twitter? James? Well, I mean, this is a, a slightly vague question, but I'm sure there will be an answer from at least two of you. Um, where's the best place to eat in Scandinavia? Mm, I'm not yes. sure if they mean country or city or restaurant, but... Um, that, that, that depends on the budget. <laughs> I mean, if you have a lot of money... Money, isn't, money is, is... You have a lot of money, you go to Noma or Magnus. The best meal I ate in Scandinavia was in a woman's house. She was called Britta. She owns a little hotel called the Treehouse Hotel up in the north. Her fish soup made with um, salmon was probably one of the best soups I've ever eaten in my life. I actually got the recipe from her. It's going in my book. Mm -hmm. And uh, she made uh, just uh, that food was outstanding. And food which was eaten at your house, which was cooked by um, Brazilians. Yeah, I helped a little bit. I did a salad for you. But I would just... I just Alex. You shouldn't be left out of this. The meatballs are going thick and say, fast. I was, I was just writing a tweet saying, can I have Can you leave some for me, please? Oh, wow. Could you... Um, could you, do you mind using my... Let me get you another talk. talk, actually. But if you go to Copenhagen, yeah. you would have to go and try the open sandwiches and rye bread. And you have... Don't go to the new fancy places. Find yeah. the old-fashioned places that's been there for 100 that's years. Schoenemann. Yeah, yeah Schoenemann or uh, Tivoli. Have sauce. Or Everything. Everything. Right. Oh, Take the whole meat away, cutting it in half. Bunch of them. I'm not <laughs> And sauce. Yeah. You've got to have sauce, yeah. everything, yeah. Deal gives me There's a further twist, because I know you... <laughs> no, 
Yeah. 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 As a further, as a further twist, could you use, with regards to the berries, mm. could you use any indigenous berries from the UK? Well, why not or... make um, wood pigeon meatballs with blackberry sauce? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Maybe. And cherries. And cherries, whatever you like. Yeah. Um, More questions from Twitter. Well, what's More comments. Um, uh, um, well, I've lost it. Liz O'Keefe, what's hey, what's a good vegetarian Scandinavian dish? I mean soup, <laughs> kale soup with uh, with potatoes. Nettle um, soup's very popular yeah, as well. Soup. I had a, probably yeah, the best nettle spring, soup yeah, I've ever eaten. Yeah, it's a spring eaten. thing. Chervil soup. Chervil soup. Yeah. Cake. In fact, <laughs> I made a lovely wild strawberry cake. But I'll tell you the best thing that I ate while I was there, which was vegetarian, which was one of your open sandwiches, which yeah. had new, very very new potatoes on it, fried and then fried leeks on top. Mm. And it looked kind of, it's like a, almost our equivalent would be a chip, chip, a chip butty. But this was amazing bread, rye, new potatoes on top, leeks. And then what else was on there? There was a oh, sauce. Um, no, we, uh, yeah, we did a um, mayonnaise with lemon. M and lemon mayonnaise on top. Oh, and you could also absolutely outstanding. have used a bit of homemade vinegar with some berries in it. That mm. would be, you know. But we like to put a little bit of the world into our, the whole world into our cuisine. Yeah. Lemon and spices. Well, you've tra well, there's been a lot of travel from, yeah, you know, you're precisely, trading spices. Precisely. You've, but there is, especially when it comes to, comes to uh, the open sandwiches, the smarabo, there is a lot of, of uh, ways to do it without the meat that's very traditional mm. with eggs and tomatoes and other vegetables that's cooked in different ways. So and if you, were to, if you were to bring one Scandinavian dish to, you know, us leather-palated Brits and mm -hmm. serve it in your own restaurant... I think that's a bit unfair. That is a bit unfair, James. <laughs> said with um, tongue said with my leather... I'd say something that I, I really like. It's very, very simple. It is normally put on bread again, but... It's scargon, which is mayonnaise with really juicy prawns in it, dill, a little bit of chopped onion, lemon juice, which is put on butter toast, and it is absolutely delicious. Yeah. I would go back to the sauce and say boil cod with a really spicy mustard sauce and boil potatoes with, with chopped, with chopped um, beetroots. We've got another question from Sarah, I think. Sorry, I'm dropping the ball here. What else can you serve meatballs with, is the question. Um, and Very important, cabbage. Cabbage. Either fried in butter. see the look on this and, uh, woman's face? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ca white cabbage, spring cabbage, red cabbage, kale, all of that, either just fried in a little bit of butter or made in a sauce like that, mm -hmm. or just boiled, steamed. You know, cabbage is, is very good. All the root vegetables and salads. Very good question here. Um, another one from Liz O'Keefe. Um, what's the most unusual Scandinavian dish, and why does it work? Wow. I think I think for a lot of uh, outsiders, the, the the boiled meatballs in a curry sauce is quite you know people get and we eat it with rice, mm. so that's very unusual. And it and that's one of the you know that's that divides people. Either you love it or you think that is the weirdest thing on the right. planet. In the kind of weird love or hate, and I don't know if it's a dish, but it's a you know Brunos cheese in Norway. Yeah. It's the brown cheese. It's a very comical yeah. cheese because the white <laughs> cheese, which is made of milk solids, <laughs> nobody's interested in. And the way that cheesemakers would normally throw away in this country is boiled yeah. down until it caramelizes and makes a salty, sweet, brown, what's referred to as cheese. And I really didn't like it, and I trained myself. I ate every single morning on waffles, hot waffles in Norway, and I made myself like it, and I stopped eating the manufactured ones and tried to find the little more farmy ones. And now I love blue cheese. Oh, I love cheese. it. On toasted <clears throat> rye bread? No, Anymore? I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I went to Sherman with my now wife, uh, there's a, their cheese, they serve it with a dash of brandy. Yeah. And there's a couple on the table next to us, an uh, old couple who hadn't said a word or, or thing, and just turned to us as our cheese arrived and said, if you get pulled over by the police and they ask if you've been drinking, say no. We just had the cheese at Sherman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Any more uh, questions sorry. here? I have a quick one from Andrew Cumming. Um, my girlfriend loves Danish pastries, and I want to try making them. Best tip? So fold them, fold the pastry. but not too many times. Fold it three or four times, and it's it's the same method as croissants. Use good quality ingredients and salted butter. There you go. What's the name of the um, Japanese bakery in the middle of Copenhagen? Because they make a really good Danish. The Lauke the Gardens. Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. They make a very very good. Um, yeah. Any more? Just a little bit. 
James? Wine or beer with meatballs. I know what you're going to say, but um, beer. Beer. And yeah. any beer in particular. <laughs> so dry. I so like dry. a pilsner. That's my new favourite. Okay. Yeah, so I so really like a, like a small brewery pilsner. Yeah. Um, can I just say thank you very, very much for joining me this evening. Um, I hope fun. you've enjoyed this cook-along too. Um, and um, tax and the care. Said really badly. It just means <laughs> thank you in Swedish. Tack för mel. Tack för mel. Tack. <laughs>